Hello, and welcome to my series on Ayurveda, emotional health and mental health, and detoxification methods that can help you with resolving digestive issues, skin disorders, inflammation, anxiety, depression, and the realization of your purpose. This is the first video of my health and wellness series. I will be keeping these videos relatively short. If you have things you would like me to focus on or questions or suggestions, please leave a comment in the comment section. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Monica Yearwood. I am a certified Ayurvedic practitioner, meditation teacher, detox expert, and founder of Hamza Ayurveda and Yoga in the city of Chicago, where we offer customized retreats for men and women looking to resolve lifestyle-related diseases, burnout, or looking for complementary therapies to support disease remediation. In this video, we are going to talk about what Ayurveda is and how it can help you. If you're interested in working with me, I will share how at the end of this video. Ayurveda is a traditional form of medicine and lifestyle practice from India. As a lifestyle practice, it emphasizes prevention through our alignment with nature. Although it might not seem like it at times, we are a part of nature and each other. We are interconnected. Unfortunately, many of our modern conveniences have put a wedge between our alignment with nature, and this has fueled many disease processes in body and in mind. But the good news is that our relationship with nature can be restored. In so doing, you can enhance your digestion, reduce inflammation, extend your life, reverse the impact of chronic stress, balance your weight, improve your relationships. If that seems like a lot or a big promise, that is because it is. Ayurveda is a wide and encompassing and literally includes every detail of a complete life, from individual purpose to disease remediation. As a lifestyle, Ayurveda emphasizes our relationship with nature through daily and seasonal practices. The daily lifestyle practices are called Dinacharya. Dinacharya means to follow the path of the day. That path is led by the 24-hour cycle of the sun. The daily teachings of Ayurveda align the human biorhythm with the sun cycle. When we live in alignment with the sun, we do things like rise with the sun and meditate, eat our strongest meal midday when the sun is at its peak, and sleep after the sun sets. Additionally, doing your most engaging or strenuous practices midday when the sun is the strongest is also emphasized. The teachings of Dinacharya mirror the science of chronobiology, which is an entire field in science that studies our circadian rhythm function. Scientifically speaking, our body clock or circadian rhythm, which refers to all of our biochemical, hormonal, and physiological processes, run on a 24-hour cycle. These rhythms, when disturbed, contribute to and can be found comorbidly with many different diseases. When circadian rhythm function is disturbed, you can have symptoms like insomnia or digestive issues, but the lifestyle practices in Ayurveda regulate circadian rhythm function. For example, we now know that the two strongest contributors to circadian rhythm regularity are exposure to light and eating times. The strongest regulator is our exposure to light in the morning. So ideally, this should be full bright light that is created as the sun rises over the horizon. But for many people, the first exposure to light comes from their cell phones. This lower strength light doesn't have the same benefit as sunlight. It doesn't suppress melatonin the same way as sunlight can, which consequently leads to lower levels of melatonin secretion at night when we know need to go to sleep, when we want to go to sleep anyway. Ayurveda also, as I mentioned before, emphasizes seasonal practices and these change throughout the year and are dependent on your immediate environment. Many of these practices are intuitive like seasonal eating, but unfortunately our intuition can be disturbed when we go to the grocery store and we see foods from all over the world or when non-native species of fruits and vegetables have been planted in our land, we wonder what is in season exactly. So before I get into that, let me explain to you the benefits of eating seasonally. Each season has a theme which we can observe in nature. For example, winter is a period of dormancy. In winter, the trees are barren, it is cold, nature is sleeping, seeds literally become dormant. There is less and less to eat. Because we want to mirror what is happening in nature, it would mean that humans would benefit from additional resting periods in winter. This is the time to conserve your energy sources, take advantage of lazy Saturdays, most of us crave warmth at this time of year, so obeying this urge by eating warm and cooked foods, soups, and stews. Additionally, this is the time of the year to increase your immune system strength. So consume foods that would have been preserved well during the winter before our modern conveniences. So things like fermented foods, which we now know fermented foods contain numerous beneficial bacteria strains that are essential for our health. And then in spring, the seeds start to germinate. And this is the best time of the year to do a cleanse. If we lived in harmony in nature, it would be about the late winter or spring when we would start to run out of our resources. 
We know that caloric restriction and fasting has numerous health benefits. It extends the life of everything from microbial species to mice to monkeys to humans. Fasting and caloric restriction is anti-cancer. It actually improves the efficacy of chemotherapy. It is good for your skin, anti-aging, and has numerous health benefits. The seasonal practices in Ayurveda are called Richucharya. If you remember, Acharya means to follow and Richu means season. So this means to follow the path of the season. Another reason why it is important to cleanse during the winter and spring junction is because of insulin regulation. We have a considerable amount of interesting science on what happens to insulin production and absorption during the winter in humans. Humans become naturally insulin resistant in the winter, and it is believed that we evolved this way to help us to hold on to fat when our resources were low. But unfortunately, because many of us do not change our diets through the year and tend to eat the same things and the same amounts throughout the year, this can really throw us off and lead to insulin resistance. We can get stuck essentially in hibernation mode and gain weight year after year after year. So now that I've shared with you some of the daily lifestyle and seasonal lifestyle practices in Ayurveda, I would like to share another quality that makes Ayurveda unique. That is its emphasis on the individual. It is taught that each person is an individual with a unique constitutional requirements. Your mind-body constitution is considered your dosha. There's a lot more I could say about dosha, but for now, I will leave it at that. Knowing your dosha can help you to tailor your lifestyle practices so that they disempower your inherent weaknesses and emphasize your strengths and significantly improve your digestion. Because we each have a unique constitution, we have a unique digestive tendency. Some people are regular, some people have a lot of heat, some people have slow and sluggish digestion. Knowing your digestive tendency can help you to choose the right dietary augmentations. Because there is not a universal or set diet in Ayurveda, diet changes through the year based on the season and it is refined and adjusted to consider your unique digestive tendency. So we have in Ayurveda, daily lifestyle practices, seasonal lifestyle practices, a nutritional system adjusted for your unique mind-body type, detox methods. The detox methods are used when imbalance has grown to be in excess. When imbalance is minimal, we use lifestyle practices. But regardless, everybody benefits from the lifestyle practices. After that, the true nexus of Ayurveda should be discussed, which is why. Why do we do any of this stuff anyway? Why does it matter? What is the point of it? The point of Ayurveda really is to keep you healthy so that you can realize your unique purpose in the world. Every person has a unique purpose to realize and there's nothing more distracting to that purpose than being sick. Ayurveda and yoga are sister sciences. They come from the same family in India. There are similarities and overlays between Ayurveda and yoga, but in general, Ayurveda is all the health, daily nutritional, diet, detox practices that keep you healthy so that you can do yoga, which is all about becoming your true embodied self and realizing your true nature. Thank you for your attention today. I hope this information aids you on your path. If you'd like to work with me, I have two programs at the moment. I have an acid reflux, hiatal hernia, GERD, and silent reflux program. You can watch the masterclass, the link is below. I also have a wait list for my group coaching program. This is a group coaching program designed for established business professionals who want to balance their weight, but also need to, and maybe most importantly, learn how to manage their stress and could be on the throes of burnout. So you've been prioritizing your career for a long time and you recognize that it is time for you to also prioritize your health. So if you're tired of dieting and dietary restriction and want to break free of all of that, then you can get on the wait list for that program and you will get an email when a spot opens up.